Hi, uh, we're finally starting chapter 6 of Intermediate Algebra. Uh, this is going to be quadratic equations and functions. Section 6.1 is solving quadratic equations by factoring. So example 1 is found on page 217 of your textbook. And it says, solve by factoring. x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Uh, we're actually going to cover four different ways to solve quadratic equations. The first way is solving by factoring. So you need to make sure you follow the directions for each type of homework question. If the directions say solve by factoring, you definitely need to use factoring. The first step when you're solving by factoring is to make sure your equation equals 0. The importance of this is based on the zero product property. Um, so let's just review that right now. The zero product property. States that if two things are multiplied together and the product is zero, then it follows that one or both of these have to equal zero. The only way to get a product of zero out of two factors being multiplied is one or both of them have to equal zero. So that's the zero product property. Okay, if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero, or they could both equal zero. So here, when we look at this example, this is actually not a multiplication, not yet. So that is why we factor. We're going to take this quadratic equation, make sure it's equal to zero or this zero product property doesn't work. If you have a number or a term on this side and your equation does not equal zero, you just subtract it off, combine like terms over here, make it equal zero. Um, we're going to go ahead and factor this. So we're going to take this, we're going to factor it. Um, if you need review of factoring, go back to those factoring videos. So this would be x plus 5, x plus 2, and I still have my equal 0. So now we have something that looks more like this. We have two things being multiplied together to equal 0, and that's the whole point of factoring, getting two things that multiply together to equal 0. If this times this equals 0, then that follows that either this is 0, or this is 0, or they're both 0. So once you have factored, the next step is to make what I call the little equations equal to zero. So you take your first factor, x plus five, you make it equal to zero. You take the next factor, x plus two, you make it equal to zero, and then you just isolate x. Of course, that would be subtract five here. So x equals negative five, and subtract two here, and you get x equals negative 2, and these are both valid solutions for this quadratic equation. Alright, example 2, x squared minus 2x minus 63 equals 0. Make sure your quadratic equation equals 0 if you're going to solve by factoring, and then you factor the polynomial side, and those factors will be x minus 9, x plus 7. I'm going to say it one more time. If you do not know how to factor, you need to go back and review. I have lots of factoring videos on my channel here. Go back and review the factoring videos because at this point it's assumed that you already know how to factor. Once you factor your uh, polynomial here, it's equal to zero. You can set each equation equal to zero. Make your little equations. So x minus 9 equals zero. x plus 7 equals zero. So x equals 9. x equals negative 7. Example 3 says x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Our equation already equals 0, so we're ready to factor this side. Our factors will be x minus 6, x minus 2. Once you have your factors, you can set each factor equal to 0. x minus 6 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. Isolate x, you get x equals 6, x equals 2. Example 4 is at the top of page 218. 2x squared plus 7x 
plus 6 equals 0. Your quadratic equation already equals 0, so you're ready to factor. Now, uh, the last three examples were all standard trinomials. This, because of the 2 here, is a non-standard trinomial. You're going to have to use either AC method or square root method or slide and divide, some other method. Um, usually AC method where you multiply 2 times 6, you get a key number of 12, then you separate this 7. Okay, so let's, you know what, let's just go through that. Um, I'm going to do AC method here. This is what I usually teach in my classes. 2 times 6 makes 12. I'm looking for factors of 12, two numbers that multiply to make 12, but add to make 7, whatever this middle term is. And of course, that's 4 and 3. And then you replace the 7x with 4x plus 3x. You still have your plus 6 from here coming down, and the 2x squared is going to come out here to the front. All right, so all you did was you found these two coefficients here by multiplying the front times the back, a times c, that's why we call it ac method. Multiply the, co the lead coefficient times the constant, it gives you this key number. You look for two numbers that multiply to make that, but add to make this, and then you replace this middle term with those two new terms. And now we're going to separate this in half and factor by grouping. So the GCF at the front is 2x, that will be times x plus 2. The GCF in the back is 3. That will also be x plus 2. And now I have x plus 2 as a common binomial. And after I take those out, I have left 2x plus 3. And again, if you need more detail, go back and review those factoring videos that are in uh, previous chapters. So these are the factors. I brought down my equal 0 here. So now I'm going to set each of these factors equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0, 2x plus 3 equals 0, and uh, we need to then isolate x. So this is going to be x equals negative 2. Uh, over here on the right, we're going to have to do two steps here. So this will be 2x equals negative 3, then divide off this 2, and we have x equals negative 3 over 2. Alright, example 5 says 6x squared minus 13x plus 5 equals 0. Again, make sure your equation equals 0. Um, and again, because of this 6, we're going to have to use AC method here, so I'll go through that again. Um, the first step for AC method is multiply the first coefficient times the second, and you get a key number of 30. 6 times 5 is 30 two numbers that multiply to make 30, but add to make negative 13. Um, positive times positive makes positive, so this 30 is definitely positive, but this 13 is negative. So for two numbers to multiply to make a positive, but add to make a negative, they're going to both have to both be negative. Um, and that is going to be negative 10 times negative 3. So I'm going to replace my negative 30 with, I'm going to use negative 3x, negative 10x. I have plus 5 on the back and 6x squared on the front. The plus 5 coming from here, the 6x squared coming from there. So again, 6 times 5 is 30. It's positive 30. Two numbers that multiply to make positive 30 but add to make negative 13 have to both be negative. Negative 10 times negative 3 and then I replace the negative 13 with a negative 3 and the negative 10x. Now, it doesn't really matter which order. You could have written negative 10 and negative 3 in the opposite order here. Your work will look different, but your final answer comes out to be the same. I put them in this order because I can see that 3 has a GCF with 6 and 10 has a GCF with 5, and it might make it a little bit easier for me, but it would have worked in either order. All right, factor by grouping. The GCF in the front is 3x, and that would be times 2x minus 1. Bring down this negative sign here. The GCF in the back is now negative 5. When I divide by a negative to factor off this GCF, it does change these signs back here. So be careful bringing down this negative and then putting a GCF here because they go together and you have to be careful then because the sign back here changes. 
but it should match this one up here. So 2x minus 1 is one of my factors, and when I factor it out, I'm then left with 3x minus 5 coming from here and here. So now I can take each of those factors and set them equal to 0 and isolate x. Um, it's two steps here. First add 1 and then divide off this 2 coefficient. So x equals 1 half and over here add 5 and then divide by 3 and x equals 5 thirds. So those are your two answers. Okay, example 6 is at the top of page 219. 4x squared minus 4x minus 15 equals 0. And again, because of this 4 here, we're going to have to use AC method. Um, 4 times negative 15 makes negative 60. So looking for two numbers that multiply to make negative 60 but add to make negative 4, and one's going to have to be positive and the other one negative, that turns out to be negative 10 and positive 6. So this will be negative 10x plus 6x. Bring down the negative 15, bring down the 4x squared. And then I'm going to separate in half and factor by grouping. So in the front, the GCF is 2x, and that's 2x minus 5, plus sign coming down. GCF in the back is 3 times 2x minus 5. So the 2x minus 5 is common. When I factor it out, I'm left with 2x plus 3. And now I can set each of those factors equal to 0. So 2x minus 5 equals 0. 2x plus 3 equals 0. To uh, isolate x is going to be two steps here. First add 5, and then divide by 2. Minus the 3, subtract the 3, and then divide by 2. So your two solutions, x equals 5 halves and x equals negative 3 halves. Example 7, 27y squared plus 54y plus 27 equals 0. Again, make sure this equals 0 before you start doing any factoring. Um, you might think you need to use AC method on here, and the first step would be 27 times 27. That's a huge number. Um, but you should always look for a GCF first, especially when these numbers are big like this. Um, it looks like 27 is a GCF, so I'm actually going to factor out 27 as a GCF first. And that will leave me with y squared plus 2y plus 1, which is a much simpler trinomial. In fact, it's a standard trinomial. The GCF is still there, but when I factor this trinomial, I have y plus 1 times y plus 1. Now, the only difference this GCF will make in your solutions is if it has a variable in it. Um, it does not have a variable, so you can totally ignore it and still make your two small equations. So y plus 1 equals 0. Actually, we have the same equation twice. We don't really need the same equation twice. We have only one solution here, y equals negative 1. For example 8, we're still solving by factoring. 81x squared minus 36 equals 0. Make sure your equation equals 0 before you factor. Uh, this is not a trinomial here, but we're still going to take out a GCF first. I can see there's a GCF here of 9. So uh, we're going to take out a GCF of 9. That leaves us with 9x squared minus 4. And this binomial right here, I hope you recognize this now as the difference of squares. And so it factors as a difference of squares. The GCF is still going to be here, but the difference of squares factors as 3x minus 2, 3x plus 2. If you don't remember how to factor difference of squares, go back and review the factoring videos. Now again, just like previously, if there's no variable in this GCF, you can ignore it. It has no effect on your solutions. We'll talk about what happens when there is a variable, but right now there's no variable here. So we're just going to make our small equations 
with these two factors, 3x minus 2 equals 0, 3x plus 2 equals 0, and then isolate x. So we have 3x equals 2, divide off the 3x equals 2 thirds, and subtract 2, 3x equals negative 2, divide off the 3, x equals negative 2 thirds. Example 9 is at the top of page 220. It says 4 over 49 x squared minus 9 over 25 equals 0. Make sure your equation equals 0 before you start factoring. Now I know at this point a lot of students are flipping out because these are fractions and how are we going to factor with fractions but again recognize that this is the difference of squares. These are all perfect squares and when a fraction has a perfect square in the numerator and the denominator the fraction itself is also a perfect square. So this is perfect square, this is a perfect square, this is the difference of squares. So to factor the difference of squares, I'm going to put my binomials here, you first take the square root of the first term where the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 49 is 7. So the square root of 4 over 49 is 2 over 7. x and that will go here and here. Then you take the square root of the second term, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 25 is 5, so the square root of 9 over 25 is 3 over 5. And you have one positive and one negative, negative. and that's just the difference of squares. Now you can take each of these binomials and make your little equations. Out. So we have 2 sevenths x plus 3 fifths equals 0 and 2 sevenths x minus 3 fifths equals 0. So to isolate x you're going to start by subtracting 3 fifths, no big deal. So 2 sevenths x equals negative 3 fifths and here comes the tricky part. How do you get rid of this 2 sevenths in front of the x? Well, ordinarily we divide off this, but division of a fraction is the same as multiplying times its reciprocal. So multiply times the reciprocal, which is 7 over 2. Do the same thing on both sides. These cancel to 1, and we get 1x equals negative 21 over 10. Now, with the difference of squares, um, these two factors are identical except for their signs. So when I solve this side, it's going to be identical to this side except for its sign. We would first add 3 fifths and then multiply times 7 over 2. So this side over here is going to be the same thing with the opposite sign. So this is 2 sevenths x equals positive 3 fifths. Multiply times the reciprocal. This always happens with difference of squares. You get two answers that are um, opposites. They're the same numbers with opposite signs. So this one is negative 21 over 10. Oh, it, this should be 10, not 2. This is positive 21 over 10. So these are your two solutions. Example 10 says x squared minus 11x equals 0. This is not the difference of squares for, although this first term is a perfect square, this second term, 11x, is not a perfect square. So the first thing we notice is there is a GCF, so let's factor out the GCF of x. All right, and then the binomial that we have left, x minus 11, is prime. It doesn't factor any further, so all you have to do here is factor out the GCF. Now this is a case where our GCF actually does have a variable in it. When this happens and you have a variable here, you have to make a small equation with your GCF. So this is going to be our first equation equal to 0. It's going to be x equals 0. The second one will be x minus 11 equals 0. Isolate x here and we get x equals 11 and this x equals 0 is actually our other solution. Alright, uh, check out the next video for the three word problems at the end of this section.